before we get to today's episode, I'd like to thank you all for your continued support of my channel. I appreciate all of your comments. If I have not responded to a question in the comment area, please know that you can reach me easily through Instagram. Send me a direct message. It's Quilters Have an Ink, and it will be in the description box below. Thanks so much. Please subscribe to my channel and like the episodes. Here's today's episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilters Heaven in Northbrook, Illinois, and I am the Opinionated Quilter. Before we get to today's episode, how to make your own designer tote bag, let's get to my opinion. In watching videos this week, I watched one where a woman talked about the 10 things she does that the quilt police hate. And in the very next video I watched, a woman was doing her project and she said, now I'm going to do something that breaks the rules, so if that bothers you, look away. And hers was that she pressed her seams to one side. The first video of the woman who did the 10 things the quilt police hate was she pressed her seams open. When I relayed this to my my employee, she said, so how's a new quilter supposed to know what to do? She says, wash fabric, not to wash fabric. How to use your cutting tools, Use cut them using the mat measurements or the ruler measurements. And I said, you have to do what works for you. And what you need to do is to be informed. I'm not the quilt police. There are no quilt police. I'm the quilt informer and I do have my opinions. Everybody has different techniques and tools that they like to use to make accurate units for their quilt blocks. People have different quilting budgets. Some people have virtually unlimited amounts of money to spend on their quilting hobby, whereas other people have to carefully budget what they spend on their quilting. One area I find that there's great differential is in rulers. Now you all know that I am the biggest Deb Tucker fan on the planet, and I love her rulers and techniques. Other people love the block lock rulers. And by the way, they are wonderful rulers. They have a groove that fits into the seam of the unit that you're going to trim down to make sure that you cut it 100% accurately. The problem is it's one ruler per size. I went on the Block Lock Ruler website to compare both the half square triangles and the flying geese rulers of Deb Tucker's to the Block Lock. On the Block Lock half square triangles, there were 17 different rulers ranging in price from $18.25 to $53.45. And there were no whole sizes. It was only um, halves, eight and a half, nine and a half, four and a half, three and a half, which then would finish to the three, four, five, et cetera. Um, and you need one for each one. And then on the flying geese rulers, there were um, 16 different rulers and, and sets of rulers starting at $19.80 and going all the way up to $48.30. And each ruler only does one size. If you compare that to Deb Tucker in her flying geese rulers, she has two flying geese rulers. One is the most common sizes, two by four, three by six, two and a half by five, etc. And then she has a second ruler that does the in-between sizes with the quarters. Um, there are some designers that do design with this size ruler, and it does get you nine different sizes. This gets you 10 different sizes. So for two rulers, you get 19 different sizes. Your quilting dollar goes a lot further with the Deb Tucker wing clipper. Same goes for the half square triangles. Now, in addition to half square triangles, Deb Tucker's also does quarter square triangles, as in hourglass units, and combo units that have a half square triangle on one side and quarter square triangles on the other side. In this big one, the Tucker Trimmer 3, it has 24 different sizes. 
from one inch to 12 and a half inches. Now this is big if you're working on much smaller things. So a lot of people also like to have the smaller one, which this smaller one is 11 different sizes from one inch to six inches. And this too also does the combo units and, and quarter square triangles. And if, if these two aren't enough for you, these do the in-between sizes of quarters and three quarters. So it's got two and three quarters, five and three quarters, two and a quarter, etc. cetera. Um, so you can get one, two, or three rulers and cover every size up to 12 and a half, um, as opposed to many, many, many more rulers with the block lock rulers. And while I, I think the block lock, lock rulers are really good rulers, it's how much can you spend on your quilting hobby. So that's my opinion today. Let's get to our project. This is the designer tote bag that I'm going to show you how to make today. I've made several versions over the years. This one has an outside zipper pocket. It has a button loop, an outside non-zippered pocket, and it has a zipper pocket on the inside, and it also has, and you can't really see it on the camera, a inside not zippered pocket. And I quilted this uh, to look like the Vera Bradley bags. It's a 60 degree diamond. I'm gonna hold it up to the camera so you can see the quilting. This tote bag that I showed you last week I did on the domestic machine, and it's just 45 degree lines, a square on point basically. And I hung this quilt to show you. Here's its matching giraffe that I had made two but only used one in the quilt. Elizabeth Hartman's Spectacular Savannah. I love making her patterns. They are so much fun. And if you have any extra blocks, a tote bag is a real good way to use up that orphan block. So what do you need to make this tote bag? If you make this size, you will need one yard of main fabric, you will need a yard and a quarter of backing, less if you quilted on a domestic machine. I needed the one and a quarter because I quilted these on, on the long arm. I used two thirds of a yard for the straps this is the way I make the straps. You can make your straps however you want to make them and you can probably use less fabric. I like these because it's four layers of fabric and it makes it nice and sturdy. Um, not necessary is trim. I used a third of a yard of the blue trim and I used a quarter of a yard of the yellow trim. So let me move around the table so that I can show you the pieces to the, to the tote. In addition to the fabric requirements, you will also need a button and two zippers. Now from your quilted fabric, you will cut two pieces 20 inches by 18 inches. That's 20 across and 18 high. For the inside zipper pocket, you will need a quilted piece eight inches in width and six inches tall. You will also need a plain fabric that is also eight inches in width and nine inches, nine and a half inches tall. For the outside zipper pocket, you will use a piece nine inches by 10 inches, 10 is the width, and you will need um, a two inch cut piece of trim to attach to the top of the zipper. For the outside non-zipper pocket, you will use a piece 10 inches by 11, 10 is the width, and you will also need a two inch piece of trim. And for the inside non-zipper pocket, the full width of the, of the bag, which is the 20 inches by uh, 10 inches high and again a two inch piece of trim to bind the top. To make the strap I go to the I, I cut 
piece is five and a half inches wide, I go to the ironing board, I press it in half, open it back up, press half up to the center, the top into the center, fold in half, press, put your batting in, and at that point we leave it. It's not going to be used until it's sewn onto the bag, and that will sew all the pockets down with the exception of the inside zipper pocket. The button loop is made the same way. The button loop is cut one and a quarter, and it's pressed the same way, fold it in half. It's so tiny, it's hard to work with. Uh, in half, bring the bottom up to the center, top into the center, fold in half, press, and then you just sew real close to the edge of the piece. And this is one and a quarter, and then um, you need about seven inches. Um, let me go back to the straps for a second. I didn't say the measurement on them. We know it's you start with five and a half inches. You want approximately 60 to 65 inches in length on your straps. Strap length is a personal decision. You'll have to put pin it on and measure and see if you like it or not. I had to use four strips, two for each side of the straps, to get the length I want. Remember, when you're, if you join things on the diagonal, um, you will lose the amount of inches that's the width of the strip. So you lose five and a half inches every time you seam. So I, rather than cut it short and use one and a half width of strips for one side and one and a half for the other, cutting three strips, I felt it was easier just to do two for each side and then just cut off what I don't need. So right now I have about 65 inches here for each side. I probably will cut it down to closer to 60, but we'll see. So I want to show you now how to make the pieces that I showed you were finished here. I've got another set for another bag cut that I'm going to take to the sewing machine and show you how we do the, the four different kinds of pockets. Here are my four pockets for my next version of the designer tote bag. This is my outside non-zipper pocket and this is my inside non-zipper pocket. All we do on these two is put a binding on it so flip to the other side and sew down. I'm going to set aside the inside non-zipper pocket because it's done exactly like the outside. So we're not going to show the fourth one. I will take this to the machine when I take the other two to the machine. Let me show you the inside zipper pocket. This is where we have our six by eight piece of quilted fabric and our eight by nine and a half piece of the plain fabric. To attach the zipper, and these are the easiest zippers on the planet to put in, all you do is put right sides together. So here's my zipper, right side up, my quilted piece, right side down. I go to the sewing machine, sew it, and then I go to the ironing board and I press it. And then we do the same thing on the other side. With the plain fabric, I folded it in a quarter of an inch, folded it in again a quarter of an inch, so I don't have any raw edges exposed here. And I'm going to show you this on the sewing machine as well. Same thing here, almost exactly the same thing, just slightly different. There's no raw edge here because this is all going to be closed up to make the pocket. This is going to get sewn with a strap onto the bag. So here I put trim, which is the inside of my bag, that's the other side of the quilted fabric, um, on the other side of the zipper as opposed to this one that has the back of the pocket on the other side of the zipper. 
So this is your nine by 10 inch piece for your outside zipper pocket. And I did the same thing here, right sides together. Here's your right side down. Here's your front side of the zipper. So going, go to the ironing board and press. And then on this side, I just used a raw edge here. I did not fold this in like I did here because this is all going to be sewn down. Even when you open the zipper, you're, you're not going to be able to see this edge. It's up inside. You're going to be putting things down inside. So I didn't care that it was a raw edge. Here, I have to then sew this closed on the top of the bag. So I did do the fold in a quarter, fold down a quarter, so that there's no raw edge here. So we, we will sew this down when we sew it to the bag. So let's go to the sewing machine so you can see how I sew these. I'm now at the machine. I'm going to show you how I attach the binding to the non-zipper pockets. I have my 97D foot. I would normally have the zero millimeter plate on, but because we're going to be switching to my beloved 10D foot next, I just thought I'd leave the, the nine millimeter plate on. And I'm just going to sew it a quarter of an inch. And I've got my stitch length at two. You don't need anything tiny. You're not doing strip sets that are going to need to be cut apart. This is just the way I would bind a quilt. And I would then go over to the ironing board and press this over here. And then I would just sew it down. I would not hand sew like I would on a quilt, but I just press real good and then sew it down. On the zipper pocket, I'm going to just sew just like I did there. I have right sides together, right side of the plain pocket, right side of the zipper, and I'm just going to sew that at a quarter inch as well. I always like to use my seam ripper to hold things. And now that one's done. And just like the other three I showed you at the table, you just then press so that they're flat. And now on each one of these on the top stitching, I switch to the 10D foot. And I'm going to move my needle over two positions. So I'm just using the guide on this foot right in the seam where the zipper meets the quilted fabric and that's going to hold the zipper down. So 
there's just where I sewed. And I do the same on this side once it got pressed. And then the same here. Really don't have to show this to you. It's just the exact same thing. And I would also do it on this side. Once you get all your top stitching done, then we can start putting the bag together. So let's stop here for today. If you want to make this, decide what pieces you want to make. Get them made, and then next week I can show you how to put it all together. Until next time, happy sewing.